East Coast volcanic hotspots and recent strange earthquakes that we've been having uh, in North America, Canada and the United States, and the seamounts in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm astonished. If you look at the uh, two, two videos before this one, more strange East Coast earthquakes, Plymouth, Massachusetts 2.1 felt in the area what's going on, and then we had the Rhode Island earthquake. And of course, they're saying, if you look at the map, uh, the Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Long Island, basically is the same area. And you can see there, the seamount stretching all the way up towards 11 o'clock towards Montreal. I used to live, I'm a, I'm a Canadian Montrealer. I'm also Canadian besides American. But uh, it's all the way up to Montreal. And uh, Mont Royal, Mont Royal, they said, there's a lake there called Beaver Lake. And they were telling us that that was a volcanic crater. Others said yes, others said no. And now I, we say, <laughs> this, this image says, yes, it's a volcanic crater going all the way to Mont Royal in Montreal. It's a beautiful mountain with a cross on top. Supposedly Jacques Cartier put it up there. And there's a beautiful park up there. The Mounties have their stables and their horses up there. There's a beautiful lake called Beaver Lake, and they say it's a crater of a volcano. Now, this is from Wikipedia, and they say here, the portion of the track of the New England hotspot, the westernmost white dot, as you can see up there about 11 o'clock, is Mont Royal in Montreal. The white dot just off the continental shelf is the Bear Sea Mount. Okay. So you can see that's where we're having a lot of quakes is at that section of the seamount. And uh, this could be answering us why we're getting these very strange quakes there. Let alone that we have five volcanoes in Maine, which is only a, from New Brunswick to New Hampshire is only 200 meters across. Five volcanoes there. Four of them are in a 100 uh, d uh, mile distance uh, occupying that area. I'm shocked. What can I tell you? Uh, let's go and look at them together. I'm not a geologist, but you know, um, we do find the information when we uh, research and we gain knowledge that way because we live in this area, these areas. We've got relatives and friends living in these areas and we care. Sorry, I have to admit I made a mistake. I thought it was Jacques Cartier that put the first cross up on Montreal. It was not. It was placed in 1643 by Paul Chamedy de Maisonneuve, founder of the city, fulfilling a vow he made to the Virgin Mary when praying to her to stop a disastrous flood. And the mountain is crowned by this 103-foot illuminated cross. Uh, at night it's lit up so you can see it very nice on top of the mountain. Installed 1924 by Société Saint-Jean-Baptiste, and of course now it's owned by the city. It was converted to fiber optic light in 1992, and then to LEDs 2009. And this is the park, uh, basically the area that has the lake there. Uh, where's the lake? I don't know where the lake is anyway. Um, that's an overview of where that lake, you could look down towards Montreal, the downtown of Montreal. Uh, which is on, basically, Montreal is on the, um, um, you know, St. Uh, Lawrence River. Okay, that's the St. Lawrence River part of it. Location of Montreal is right there. And um, right there, okay. So, the seamounts. Uh, I'm shocked because it looks like um, a lot of this... Um, Activity could be because of that. Seamounts. Look at this now. Okay, more here. Let's look at this one. North Carolina. Okay. No, sorry, I wanted to go to the other ones. Where were they? This one here. New England, New England and Corner Rise. Corner Rise Seamounts, New England. This is Noah again right here. Out here. That's it right here. That's Long Island. 
So uh, this is basically where we're at, the Wikipedia. No, I, I don't want Kelvin. I want, uh, oh, that's another one. What is that called? I don't know where that is. Okay, that's on the West Coast. No, we don't want the West Coast. We wanted the uh, East Coast. This, yes, Seamounts of North America. Okay. Sea Mounts of North America. The New England hotspot, also referred to as the Great Meteor Hotspot, is a long-lived volcanic hotspot in the Atlantic Ocean. The hotspot's most recent eruptive center is the Great Meteor Seamount, also called the Great Meteor Table Mount, which you can see there, is a guillot and the largest seamount in North Atlantic with a volume of 24,000 cubic kilometers, or 5,000 cubic miles, is one of the seaward seamounts rooted on a large terrace located south of the Azores, Azores Plateau. It's probably created a short line of, the, to, of mid to late Cenozoic age seamounts in the, of the, on the African plate, but appears to be currently inactive. The New England hotspot track, there we go, the places known as hotspots are volcanic regions thought to be fed by underlying mantle that is anomalously hot compared to the surrounding mantle. A hotspot track results if such a region is moving relative to the mantle. So there's a hotspot there. That's, that's like a, you know, as our friend Terrell Blackstar would say, a magma corridor. So, uh, the New England hotspot track is used to estimate the movement of the North American plate away from the African plate. And from the early Cretaceous period to the present, New England hotspot has been overridden by the Mid-Atlantic. And the history, 200 million years ago, just as the Atlantic Ocean was starting to form, the area, this is it right here, and this is where we're having our earthquakes, right there, Rhode Island, we had Pennsylvania, we had uh, now uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts, okay, um, and of course we had the, um, let's go to Canada. Okay, here we are in Canada, and you can see uh, this is New York right here, Long Island, Rhode Island. Uh, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and these are the earthquakes, pretty big, as you can see here, into the Atlantic Ocean, 3.6, this was October 30th, and this was, uh, as you can see, 3.3, again, Grand Banks, 3.3, 18 kilometers depth, this is, of course, more recent, November 5th, 2.4, off uh, Nova Scotia in the Atlantic Ocean. And this is the latest one, November 8th, 1.8 magnitude, five kilometers depth. But you can see that uh, November 2nd, 2.6 magnitude, 18 kilometers in, off Yarmouth, uh, Nova Scotia. But you can see that um, it's pretty active along that area. Right here, right here. Now, geologic history, about 200 million years ago, just as the Atlantic Ocean was starting to form, the area northwest of Hudson Bay, the area northwest, this is Hudson Bay, northwest of Hudson Bay, northwest of Hudson Bay. By the way, this is, uh, was formed by a, a, a comet impact about 13,000 years ago, around the Younger Dryas, they found soot all along North America, indicating that all the, the area here was burnt from that impact. And they thought it was only uh, North America. Then they thought it was the Northern Hemisphere. And then they were, found it was worldwide. And that that comet uh, broke up into several pieces and hit the world, world worldwide. One of them is here. Hudson Bay was formed that way. 
But um, right there. Okay. So that's Hudson Bay. The area northwest of Hudson Bay was over the New England hotspot. Hudson Bay. Let's pull out a little bit. Was over this. Can you imagine how, how the earth has grown? Amazing. Hudson Bay was over the New England hotspot. About 15 million years later, as the Atlantic Ocean opened slightly, the plume was under present-day Ontario. Ontario. That's Quebec. This is Ontario. Can you imagine how fast how fast it's been growing 50 million years later over um, Ontario, creating numerous kimberlite fields. What are kimberlite? Remember kimberlite? We have kimberlite explosive volcanoes in Kansas. When people were hearing those a uh, little few days back, uh, maybe a week or you know, two weeks, I made a video on that. And we figured that it could have been the booming sounds in their houses shaking with the booming supersonic booms that they kept heard hearing. They thought it was overhead, uh, you know, supersonic jets. It wasn't. And it could be we found that there were kimberlite volcanoes in Kansas, especially around the northwestern third of the state. And the kimberlite volcanoes produce diamonds and gems and semi-precious stones. And they have explosive eruptions. And it could be the gas trying to come out from there explosively rocking the land. You know, they don't see anything. It's just a gas trying to come out, which could be bubbles that are miles wide. Um, so, Kimber present day Ontario creating numerous kimberlite fields. Kimberlite is an igneous rock which sometimes contains diamonds. And it's named after the town of Kimberley, South Africa, where the discovery of an 83.5.5 carat diamond called the Star of the South Africa in 1869 spawned a diamond rush and digging of the open pit mine there. Okay, so kimberlite fields are volcan volcanoes that spit out diamonds. About 125 million years ago, the hotspot created the magma intrusions. Intrusions formed by magma penetrating existing rock. Okay, the hotspot created magma intrusions of the Monte Region Hills in Quebec. What the frick is that? I'm sorry. I'm shocked because I used to live in Monte Region. How many times did we go to Beaver Lake? I mean, that's a volcano for God's sakes. You know, in southern Canada, Quebec, Canada, which is Montreal, of course. The, here we go, the Monteregian Hills, in a linear chain of isolated hills in Montreal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Who would have thought little Montreal was so... You know, I remember... Uh, wow, when I was small, it was beautiful. I mean, we had farms there. You know, they have a very short planting uh, season because it's so cold there. And the earth also freezes up. But as we said, it's very soft and there's a lot of water in it. But we had, a, we had farms there that had horses. And the man was plowing his field with horses, pulling the plow. And the horses, the poor little animals, the little beasties, had so much hair on them, especially on their legs. They had so much hair on their legs. And I was so happy to see them, at least they weren't being cold. <laughs> With their, all the hair on their legs, the horses, that is. Um, anyway, the Monteregian Hills, a linear chain of isolated hills in Montreal and Monterige between the Laurentians and the Appalachians. Okay. They're hot spots. Look at them. They almost, they almost look like, you know, lava domes or something. Um, the lack of an obvious track west of the Monteregian Hills may be due either to failure of the plume to penetrate the Canadian Shield, there it is, to the lack of 
this happen? What is it? I don't want that. Um, to the lack of recognizable intrusions or to strengthening of the plume when it approached the Monteregian Hills. About 25 million years later, the hotspot created the magma intrusion in the White Mountains in New Hampshire. There it is. Covered quarter of the state of New Hampshire. So New Hampshire also has magma intrusions in New Hampshire, part of the northern Appalachian Mountains and the most rugged mountains in New England, the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, as the North American plate moved west, it created the New England seamounts. There, there they are, right there. Okay, so, as North America moved west, it created the North America seamount chain. It might have been the seventh or eighth most active hotspots of the period. The hotspot declined in activity after it made Nashville seamount is a seamount in the Atlantic Ocean part of the New England seamount, which was active about more than 100 million years ago. It was formed when North America plate moved over the New England hotspot. Okay. The hotspot declined in activity after it made Nashville seamount about 83 million years ago, and the hotspot created the Corner Rise seamount about 75 million years ago. We can't see that. Where is it? Corner Rise seamount. Somewhere in there, anyway. Uh, Renewed volcanic activity formed the seawart seamounts. The great meteor seamount we already talked about, the little meteor seamount, Tyro seamount, Atlantic seamount, Plato seamount, Cruiser table mount, Irving seamount, Hyer seamount. Look at them all. 10 to 20 million years ago. 10 to 20 million years ago. I mean, what can I tell you? I can imagine the amount of activity. Ten to, I mean, all this moving around like as if they're big ships. There it is right there. Amazing. Oh, we've had very big quakes here recently. Look at that. This is today. Today. That's, those are volcanic islands too, by the way. Nobody reported feeling this. Okay. Who would go into the trouble repeating to USGS anyway? Okay. So, yes, the East Coast earthquakes we have established. Hawaii also. Okay. May have something to do with, um, you know, we. I've had comments and, of course, you know, I, I love it when you comment because I love reading your comments. First of all, you're all such beautiful souls. I'm really, when I think about you, I really, it, it brings tears to my eyes. You're such beautiful people. And I'm lucky to have viewers and subscribers like you. You're very sweet, all of you. God bless you. Um, yeah. One one person said, "Yeah, it could be the West Coast. You know, the magma plumes pushing, crun uh, uh, cr um, crumbling, uh, sort of pushing in, and perhaps this is, that's what's caused the uptick here, and maybe even pushing all the way there." Okay, yeah, of course it's possible, but also, um, I don't know. I'm not a geologist, but maybe it's um, it has to do with the sea mounts there as well. We'll have to keep a look out of this because this is very strange activity. Uh, some people that were there, uh, that live there, uh, Maine, Vermont, had uh, a couple of months back told me that when they were taking nature walks in that area, you know, in the summer, uh, vacationing, taking nature walks, they smelled the uh, scent of rotten eggs, which you smell in volcanic areas or if something is happening underneath and... Uh, uh, sulf sulfur uh, dioxide comes out. Uh, the, the sulfur smell smells like rotten eggs. And that's not good because it shows that something is happening underneath. And of course, that's because there's magma underneath here. 
You know, you got you got all the okay, just because they think they're extinct, it doesn't mean that they're extinct. Um, there has been there have been some geologists that say that uh, they could they could reactivate, and that it could happen again. Uh, they don't know if, how long it will take, but this this area has uh, a lot of volcanoes, especially Maine. We said the has five volcanoes. Okay, so maybe it has to do with the seamounts of the New England um, hotspots. There we are. The western white dot is Mount Montreal, right there in Canada. Okay. So, that's it. The white dot off the continental shelf is the Bear Sea Mount. Right there. Bear Sea Mount, Kelvin Sea Mount, Bear Sea Mount, Manning. And that's Massachusetts right there, Cape Cod. Okay. The uh, Bear Sea Mount, flat topped underwater volcano. It's all these are volcanoes, of course. Is the oldest of the New England seamounts, which was active more than 100 million years ago, formed when the North Atlantic plate moved over New England hotspot. It's located inside the Northeast Canyons and Seamount Marine National Monument. Proclaimed by President of the United States Barack Obama to be protected to protect the seamount biodiversity. And here it is right here, 3D depiction of it. Right there. Fisalia Seamount in the background. Amazing. The Bear Sea Mount is the first Gaillot in the chain of about 30 extinct volcanoes. 30 volcanoes extending straight line southeast, 30 volcanoes from the edge of the continental shelf to Woods Hole, Woods Hole, Massachusetts, to northeast of Bermuda. So 30 extinct volcanoes, straight line southeastward from the continental shelf near Woods Hole, Massachusetts, to northeast of Bermuda. The seamounts result from the movement of the mantle plume hotspot. This hotspot is now under the great meteor seamount, right there. The chain rises about 4,000 meters, 13,000 feet above the surrounding Soam abysmal plain, and over the time they have been eroded and have developed the flat table-like summits surrounded by slopes with an inclination of about 20 degrees. The currents in the vicinity of the Bear Sea Mount include the warm water Gulf Stream flowing towards the northeast, the deep boundary current flowing along the continental shelf towards the southwest, and the deep icy cold Arctic bottom water flowing past the lower flanks of the chain. The Bear Sea Mount rises about 2,000 to 3,000 meters, that's 6,600 to 9,800 feet, above the surrounding seabed in the roughly flat summits about 3,600 feet below the surface of the sea. The top is covered by a deep layer of sediment through which the basalt rocks and erratic boulders protrude. Much of this material has fallen from above, probably from icebergs that drifted southward during the Pleistocene. And the Pleistocene was about uh, two and a half million years ago to 11,700 years ago, spanning the world's most recent period of repeated glaciations. So that's it. 30 extinct volcanoes. This is Bear Sea Mount, bathymetry, you can see that, how deep it goes. So maybe that has to do with why we're getting earthquakes uh, in uh, the northeast, on the east coast in the northeast. Besides, of course, the uptick in the New Madrid seismic zone, Something is happening here as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events. 
events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.